<laughs> All right, welcome back. <laughs> Great start. <laughs> uh, this week we have a super extra special guest, Miss Jackson. Wow. Hi, guys. Yeah. I'm so glad you're here. I miss you. I know. I miss you, too. I don't know if everyone knows. We share a room most of the time. So we, like, tag team the Flex Lab when we're at lead. Yeah. Just high five. Like, ready? Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. No, I want to. There we go. Yeah. We yeah. usually a tag team. And now we're separated. And so I'm glad that you are coming to art class today. Yeah, me too. And this week is all about one of your favorite artists, Kenton Nelson. So let's jump right in. You ready? Okay. Okay. All right. Who is Kenton Nelson? I don't know if you know what he actually looks like because he was kind of hard to find photos of. Mm -hmm. You've seen him before. He's he's kind of precious. Yeah. Kind of like like a normal guy. You know. Yeah. I said that last week too. Maybe I just have a crush on all artists. I don't know. I'm digging these like dad jeans situation. Yeah. Here. Um, but he's only 66 currently, so he's, he's a youngin compared to a lot of the other ones. I think all the other ones I've had are older or, um, deceased. So he's, oh. he's still kicking. He's still working. Yeah. Good choice picking somebody contemporary. Hey, thanks. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hey. He's <laughs> an American painter and muralist born and raised in Los Angeles. You ever been to LA? You know, I have. Um, I was very young. So I remember Hollywood being not what I expected at all. What do you mean? But I've been there, I think, twice, but the latest was, I think I was in like eighth grade. So it's been a long time. Yeah. I wouldn't go there now. Just a suggestion, though. But, you know, yeah. It, if you're passing through or like you're already in the area, it may be worth seeing, but it's not something I would take a trip just to see Hollywood or LA. Fair enough. Now I would take a trip to see Mr. Nelson though. Cause yeah. Cause he looks like a cool dude. He looks he's, like he'd he's be fun over coffee or something. Buzz cut and just living his life being a muralist slash painter. I love it. He does stylized, figurative, large formats. Um, and so you can kind of see, here's a mural, obviously. His website's pretty awesome. It's got um, not just like murals and his paintings, but it also has like mosaics that he's done, like giant mosaics that I think most of them are found in California as well. And so if you do venture out, not anytime soon, but in the far future that you go to LA or go to California, you could pass by some of his work. And it looks just like his paintings. It's just made with like little pieces of tile, but pretty cool. Um, so he idealizes the ordinary and does it with like a very theatrical style. Lots of big highlights and shadows. Um, what do you like about him? Why did you pick him out? I kind of like exactly what you just said. I feel like he picks out ordinary things and like images and makes them just cooler. I, I'm very dense when it comes to like poetry and art and everything else. So um, <laughs> if it's like out there and you have to realize something or you have to like really, you know, look at it, I'm just not. So to me, it's just really cool art. It would be art that I would actually hang in my house if I could afford it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I necessarily want, like, the deep, intense yeah. art in my house that's going to remind me of these, yeah, like, I want something that's just going to be aesthetically pleasing to the eye yeah. and pretty, yeah, I'm the exact same way. I really like his stuff, too. I was familiar with it, but because you picked him out, I've now okay. gotten way more familiar. And oh, that's cool. Uh, yeah, so thanks. Sure, and anytime. And I'm the same way. Like, I just appreciate somebody who can just create something that's beautiful as well. I, I love the deep stuff, mm -hmm. but I like looking at his pictures a lot better than some of the other ones. So, good call. Um, here's just some examples of his work. And he also, on his website, featured some sketches. So you could see how he goes from one to the other. Starts with a sketch and then paints it all in. I just like how, like, smooth everything is. Mm -hmm. And the shadowing, I think, adds to it. It's mm -hmm. not, you can kind of tell where the light is. 
or where the light's not. I don't know. That's glossy. This mom on a chair with high heels. Yeah. This is not my life at all. Maybe on a chair. Those are yeah, not my hats. They look great, but not. I am not wearing high heels at home like that. No, no way. No way. But hey, more power to you, girl. Exactly. <laughs> girl power right there. Um, so he also does, there's a lot, um, a lot of his figures are from the pool because you picked out the swim party. Yeah. And I think those are the most popular ones. And those are the ones that I found tons and tons of. So I tried to grab a couple of other ones. He's got some more architecture where mm -hmm. it's still that idealistic image. So this one's called Yellow Porch right here. I like that one. Um, and then he's got some like more figures that are just random, so not the pool necessarily. So we've got a ballet one stretching. Um, he has some guys as well. Um, but most of them, like I said, mm -hmm. are the pool. I think that I, it really makes me want to go to the pool, which I know is not going to happen. Yeah anytime soon, unless it's like a baby pool in my front yard, not the same. But, um, and then here's another one of his. So I don't know, did you find him through the pool one or are you familiar with this other work? I actually did. I, there is a movie that Jack Nicholson and um, I forget who else. I, it's uh, I Keating. Yes, yes. yes um they were in and I love there's like a beach house that's in the movie and I love the beach house I was infatuated with it and in looking at the actual house they had his art like up around the house so that's actually how I got turned on to it um but I saw it like on the mantle and in this house and like in like what well, I think a couple of the bedrooms there were other and it was kind of just his artwork I just became really interested in. And um, that's kind of where I found it originally and then did research on how can I, like, how can I buy this? Cause I wanted it for my house. And then I realized that I would have to obviously buy a knockoff if I wanted it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, just like that. Yeah. And something's gotta give, yes, that movie. Oh my gosh. I, that's one of the things that I found when I was researching him more this week. It was, um, and we'll come to that, but yeah, but essentially he, he was already pretty popular in California and then he was featured on something's got to give in 2003, I think. Yeah. Um, and he got really popular with specifically the piece that you chose because of that. Mm -hmm. And so I was curious if that's, how you came up with that one or if that's how you originally found it. Um, yeah. And it's true. So mm -hmm. awesome. absolutely. Very cool. Okay. So you might notice that that one was swim party number two, mm -hmm. which made me curious uh, what's number one. And then I also found there's a number three. Yeah. And there's so, a whole line of them, which I didn't know until I looked it up either. Yeah. So what makes you pick out number two or, or did you have like a specific reason that you? Well, I just kind of, I, I obviously liked it from the get go, but, um, one of the most happiest times of my childhood was being at the pool with my mom and oh. she would take us every day and it was after lunch. And then we had to get back in time to watch. We were there for like an hour or two and we had to get back in time to watch a soap opera of all things. I don't, that I don't think that. Totally, but, but I'm sure it yeah. was a choice. It was just one of the most, like, it was a happy memory. And for some reason, this, like, number two reminds me of that time. This was obviously not my mom, but <laughs> <laughs> she would kill me if I ever said it was in that swim cap. But um, <laughs> this was one of those things where it brings back that memory for me. So it's just, a, it just makes me happy looking at it. I, I love it. Yeah, one of my favorite things is going to the pool too with mm -hmm. my family. Yeah. Growing up in it now. Well, maybe not right now, but eventually last summer that happened. Yeah. So I do we'll get there, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> I do think we need some of these swim caps. I would really. Yeah. 
Oh, I was on the swim team, so I did have swim caps, but they weren't, like, fashionable like these. Oh, yeah, these are so fashionable. <laughs> you were on the swim team? I was. We didn't have a school one, but we had, like, a summer, like, club team. And, yeah. I mean, I that stroke was my jam, girl. Oh, Woo! my gosh. Okay, what was your – wait, what did you say was your jam? Backstroke. Backstroke. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. I could see that. Total backstroker right oh, there. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, my that, God. that was it. That was all I was good at right there. <laughs> I'm, learning, stop it. I'm learning so much. Okay. I love it. Well, let's jump into swim party number two. So okay. there's not a ton out there. I think because like you mentioned, like his stuff isn't, he doesn't go into like this great depth about the meaning. Um, it does suggest some things with this idealistic, idealistic style. Um, but, oh, and that's not even supposed to be in here. Delete that. But he, um, I don't know. <laughs> I think to I do it. For this, like, I just love the simplicity of it. Like, yeah. looking at it, you kind of instantly already know and can feel the setting. Um, and I just liked kind of the, like, the water effects, because it looks like the water has movement, but it's not like totally complicated yeah. and I mean, she's in a bathing suit, but it's not like risque bathing suit, you know? So you don't, when you look at it, I'm, I, I don't analyze like one piece of it. I kind of just look at it as a whole where some other things I think I would, but. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think the point of it, um, I think what I was trying to say too, is that he, he really leaves it up to the viewer for interpretation. So mm -hmm. that's what you get from it. I heard that a lot in the discussion board this week. It's simple. Um, lots of reflection on like the water and um, picking that out. So let's jump in to um, a couple. This is a big one, so I'm not going to read the whole thing, but a couple different interpretations from those discussions from students this week. Ooh, cool. All right. Kind yeah. of fun. Okay, so Kaylin M. She Hi, was awesome, and I asked her if I could read this. Um, she really went into it. I see someone sitting on a towel near, near the side of the pool. So she starts to just explain it. She talks about how she loves the color combinations. Uh -huh. um, some people didn't, which is funny. I like them, but yeah, everyone, it's your own interpretation. She talks about the texture of the water, which came up a lot. Um, but then what I wanted to point out from her, for her interpretation was, to me, this is quite meaningful. The title of it is Swim Party, which mm -hmm. might seem odd to others because there's only one person in the image. But for me, I, what is that? I 100,000% I agree or relate to it. I believe the woman is sitting alone in isolation, watching everyone else at the party simply being social and having fun. But for her, it might be difficult for her to have fun, whether that is because she's feeling anxious, left out, embarrassed. I think most of us can relate to that at some point. Um, oh. Right? And so she goes into, she usually feels anxious and dis distant when it comes to those big social settings. Um, and I love that interpretation. Yeah. Like she's taking this, which to you is just really nice and pretty to look at and reminds you of childhood. Um, but she's seeing this like entire new interpretation of this party by yourself. Yeah. Um, and can't you picture that? I mean, usually at a party, there's like one or two people who it takes them a while to warm up to the whole like crowd of people. Yes. So yeah. I Absolutely. totally get that. I think we've all been there at some point. And so completely relatable, even if it's not specifically in the pool setting, but um, we've all been there. Awesome. I love that interpretation, Kaylin. Thank you for sharing. Okay, one more. So JD. Hey, you know. Ooh, I know JD. Oh my gosh, JD. <laughs> um, so I liked his because he comes from a swimmer's perspective. So he says, to me, this picture I can relate to a lot more than the other pictures because I am myself a swimmer and have been for the past 12 years. That's why JD's your mentee. Is it because you're yeah. both swimmers? Now I know. That, that, that's it. Perfect. Yeah, know. <laughs> the swimmer looks to be female in black, shining one-piece suit. She is wearing a swimming cap, but the cap looks like a synchronized swimming cap. I don't know if you noticed oh. that. 
I would not know the difference because yeah. I'm not a swimmer, but hey, um, ones that professionals use in things such as the Olympics. Hmm. Nice, Jamie. Cool. My one question is the title of the piece, Swim Party. So he then says, wait, why is it called a party if there's only one person? So he also commented on the fact that she's by um, herself, which I thought was kind of interesting. Lots of yeah. people pick that up. How but, did I not like at all pick that up? Right? <laughs> These kids are smart. They're really they are. <laughs> diving in. <laughs> We're just like, it's so pretty. <laughs> this is why we ask you questions, guys, in class, because we don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> we need your help. So thanks. <laughs> thanks, Chad, yeah. Kaylin, for making sense of this art. Because honestly, even when you research it, Nelson is not giving away anything. No. So Absolutely it's not. really, yeah, it's, it's whatever you think. And so I love this. They bring a lot more meaning to it than we did. Yeah. <laughs> okay. As we're wrapping up, I have just a couple fun facts about Kenton Nelson. So, um, first fun fact, he was inspired by his great uncle. He has publicly said this many times, Roberto um, Montenegro, I looked it up. Good who's job. a renowned Mexican muralist. I was not familiar with him, with the muralist. This is one of his up here. I don't know if you were. No. No. Yeah, I was not either. However, um, I am familiar with Roberto's close friends, Diego Rivera and Frida Kahlo. You know, Frida with the unibrow. Um, and so we'll go back to them in a second. But so they were all Mexican artists mm -hmm. or Mexican-American artists around the same time. Um, so a couple other quick things. So he has had paintings featured five times on the cover of The New Yorker. And here's three of them down here pretty impressive mm -hmm. pretty cool and I get it like yeah, yeah. it kind of reminds me of like the era if you've seen the show Mad Men from mm -hmm. like it, either on Netflix or when it actually played that when advertising had really started up and they were trying to figure out what works with audiences and what doesn't and of course I mean coming from a business teacher that's kind of yeah. how my mind works <laughs> but um <laughs> It really, I don't know, like seeing it on the New Yorker, it brings back that like era for me. Was that like the 50s or 60s, something like that? Yeah. Yeah, I love it. Um, from the business, I kind of, I'm gonna backtrack really quickly because I went over this because we were talking about something else, but you mentioned, so you mentioned something's gotta give and that's how you first found out about this. Mm -hmm. Um, about this painting in particular, when I went to look up this painting, notice this is just for a print. This is what I found. <laughs> and it's sold out. <laughs> um, and it talks about how it was featured in the film. And then there's been tremendous demand for this print ever since. Mm -hmm. um, and so from the business standpoint, like that shows you how that marketing, even if it's not like obvious advertisement, it's just featured in something like that can all of a sudden oh, absolutely transform your career. Yeah. Because otherwise we wouldn't be talking about him right now because you wouldn't know about him. Well, and in my marketing class, we talk a lot about product placement and you don't really know the impact until afterwards. But I think that's why there's always so many businesses willing to give stuff to like the big blockbuster movies and production and everything for like props sitting around because they get noticed. And there's been some dramatic fails with that, but also some really big, um, some big money makers. And I think this is evident of that. I like that. <laughs> some yeah. dramatic fails. What do you mean by dramatic fails? Give me just a taste of that. Um, like for instance, uh, putting like an electronic device in a movie where the electronic device hadn't been invented yet. Yeah. You know, like that's a little, like we get it. We get what you're doing. It's not. This doesn't play. Thanks. <laughs> I got it. That makes sense. <laughs> okay, so a couple other quick things. Um, I found you can follow him on Instagram since he's still working. This was posted a couple days ago, two days ago. Um, mm -hmm. I just thought it was so precious. You can see into his studio. And then um, occasionally he talks about, 
he makes limited prints like of I think Swim Party was one of those limited prints mm -hmm. um, and then he donates the money to nonprofits. so he just seems like a nice guy yeah it doesn't seem like I don't think he's married or anything I couldn't find any information on family besides his uncle and mm -hmm. so it seems like he's just kind of dedicated to his work and just like a nice I don't know Californian yeah. is what I imagine I don't know him shout out to him but yeah way to go kitten nice job proud of you um, okay, last thing, I'm going to leave you on this. So I mentioned that his uncle who inspired him was friends, this is his uncle right here, Roberto, was friends with Frida Kahlo and Diego Rivera. Rivera. Um, and I wanted to shout that out because that's a little teaser for next week. Ooh. I know, this works out perfect. I don't, you set this up. I don't know how you did this, but it's Miss it's, Orly it's is going to join us right. next week. You're so smart. No, seriously. I wish I could say that this was all <laughs> perfectly planned, but I had no idea. Um, Miss Gorley is going to join us next week for one of her favorite artists, which is Diego. That's awesome. We're all friends. Oh yeah, we, we really are, people. We really are. Beautiful. I love it. And they got married in his garden. That's what this picture is. Ooh, I'm find a picture of all of them together, but this is at his house. So kind of nice. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining me. Hey, anytime, anytime. This was fun. You're the best. Well, if you have any help with business, I don't know if I'll be very helpful, but <laughs> I'm happy to join. <laughs> hey, you are always helpful. Well, good. You have an awesome weekend, and I will talk to you later, okay? All right. Sounds good. Bye, everybody. Bye.